I'm Chef Hyken, and here's what's coming up on this edition of Be Amazing or Go Home. The me economy. Today's economy is all about you and me and your customers. I'll share five ways to understand today's economy and how you can deliver a better customer experience. Creating super fans. If your customers aren't telling their friends about you, then you're in trouble. And Brittany Hodak is here with the answers on how you can multiply your customers exponentially. Relevance. How can you differentiate yourself and be a leader in your industry? John Hall is in the studio with expert advice on how to build your brand to become and remain relevant. And I'll be back. The amazing quote walks you through a simple process in order to get your customers to say those three magic words. I'll be back. So, are you ready to be amazing? Stay tuned for all of this and more on Be Amazing or Go Home. Hello, I'm Shep Hyken, and this is Be Amazing or Go Home, the show dedicated to take you from average to amazing. Customers expect more, want to be treated better, expect you to know them, demand you cater to them, and give them an easy, no-hassle, frictionless experience. In today's economy, it really is about the customer, as in us, you and me. The notion of the economy came from a conversation I had with Gabe Larson, the senior vice president of Customer. Understanding the economy will help you give your customers a better experience. So here are the five things that customers want and expect from the companies they do business with in today's economy. Number one, self-service. Self-service options have been around for a long time, but today's customers expect more from self-service. Customers will often seek the information they need on their own, hoping to get a quick answer without having to pick up the phone, wait on hold, verify their account with the company, and more. We need to provide good, frequently asked question pages on our websites, video tutorials, chatbots that can answer basic questions, and much more. Number two, real time and anywhere. Customers want their questions answered when they want it, the way they want it. This could be an easily searchable knowledge base of frequently asked questions. But what happens if the customer doesn't speak the language? For example, the questions and answers are in English, but the customer speaks French. Is it possible to translate the content into a customer's language? Of course it is, and chatbots are now able to respond in the language of the customer's choice. Number three, personalization. Customers expect you to know who they are. They expect you to know what they bought in the past, where they bought it and when they bought it, and how often, if ever, they've called in and for what reasons. Personalization always has been a nice way to get close to the customer, but now it's not an option. Customers can tell the difference between a company that knows or remembers them and a company that doesn't. Number four, channel of choice. Having multiple ways a customer can connect with a company is one thing, but what customers really want is to use those channels as a continuous conversation versus fragmented connections from one mode of communication to another. This means having the capability for the customer to reach out via text messaging, switch to phone, and then to email, all without missing a beat. Customers shouldn't have to identify themselves again and again or repeat their story over and over. It should be one ongoing conversation, regardless of what channel or how many channels are used in the interaction. And number five, a low or no friction experience. It's all about reducing the friction a customer goes through when doing business with a company or an individual. Every time I hear an executive in the customer service and CX world emphasize the importance of convenience, I smile. It's very simple, all things being equal, with a good product, with good service, the company that's easiest to do business with will win. Remember, the new economy is the me economy, and the me economy is all about your customers. Give them what they want and expect, or you're at risk of losing them to your competition.
How do you get your current customers to create even more customers for you? Well, being great is no longer good enough. You have to be amazing, or according to super fan strategist Brittany Hodak, you have to be super. And Brittany joins us now to talk about it and how to turn customers into super fans. That's what it's all about. Welcome to Be Amazing or Go Home. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. All right, well, let's jump right into it. A huge business threat to businesses everywhere isn't on leaders' minds nearly enough. So let's start there. What is that? It's apathy. 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 You just aren't doing a good enough job making people care. You're not connecting with them. I work with leaders all the time and they say, we have a huge awareness problem. Not nearly enough people know who we are. And sometimes that's true. But more of the time, plenty of people know they just don't care because the business hasn't given them a reason to care. They haven't been good enough to make people come back again and again and tell their friends. All right, so this is the coolest thing that I didn't know about this until just yesterday. Uh, my results from my study came back. We interviewed over a thousand consumers and the number one reason people leave is Apathy? Apathy. There you go. So spot on, wow. spot on. It is, it is a huge threat, and it's, it's, it's funny that, that people aren't talking about it. And, you know, sometimes we hear about attrition or abandonment, but it's at every single step of the customer journey, you've got to make people care enough to come back, or as you would say, be amazing, or they might go home. Yep, and so how do you do it? So that is the million dollar question, right? And the secret sauce looks a little different for every company because you've really got to start with your DNA and create an amazing story. I do have a shortcut. Are you interested in the shortcut? Let's go with the shortcut. <laughs> so I like to talk about the idea of being super, as you alluded to before. And mm -hmm. super is my five step system that can teach anyone to do a better job with customer experience. And the S in super stands for start with your story. Story. You've got to figure out what it is that makes you amazing, both at the company level and at the level of every employee who's delivering those experiences. All right, and do we have time to go to UP, E, and R, or should we save that uh, and entice them to <laughs> <laughs> either go look you up online or, or what? <laughs> we'll make it really quick. Okay. All right, so U stands for understand your customer story. P is personalize and connect. E is exceed expectations and R is repeat. And I always like to say that super fans are created at the intersection of your story and every customer's story. So it's really critical to listen to your customers to understand their story so that you can connect yours in a way that doesn't give them the opportunity to become apathetic. You're so, making them care. So it's about us. It really is about connecting and, and that's great. Now, you have this concept of the super fan. Mm -hmm. And what is a super fan? How do you define the super fan? And why is a super fan important? Well, super fans are important because they create more customers for you. And I define a super fan as a customer who's had such an amazing experience with your brand, product, or service that they can't help but tell others. They want to be out there advocating on your behalf. All right. Any tips on how to make employees deliver the super fan experience. One great tip is to make it real to them. Don't let your core values be something that gets talked about at the boardroom and sort of filters down. Give your customers real ways to over deliver for your customers. Make sure that your employees know what they're allowed to do. I love in your book, you tell the, you tell the example in go, uh, Be Amazing or Go Home about the, uh, the Ritz Carlton where uh, you got the chocolate because the, the towels were left behind. Make sure your employees have guidelines, but then empower them to use their own creativity to solve problems to really connect with customers because the way you connect with five different customers might look five different ways right. if you've got an employee that's doing a great job personalizing and connecting. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, for those that aren't familiar with that story, the Rich Carlton has up to $2,000 that the employee can spend to make sure a guest is taken care of the right way. Yeah. I found dirty towels in my room from the guest that was before me. No big deal. I mentioned it to the housekeeper and she gave me a little note and a piece of chocolate that probably cost 75 cents, not $2,000. However, if it had been something major, she would have probably spent more to take care of me. By the way, when spent more means, she would have used the resources the Ritz had. Yeah. So that's great. Any other tips on how to be amazing? You know, I would say for, 
not everybody is going to have two thousand dollars to give every employee to use at their discretion but every leader should come up with an amount of either money or time that can be allocated and empower your customers to use their best discretion to solve those problems because that's how you're going to create more engaged customers you're you're getting your employees to care and you know it's a virtuous cycle the the employees and customers connecting together right and i would imagine if the uh, employees have a story to tell about how they took that empowered attitude and, and fixed it and you shared it with other employees what a great training opportunity absolutely and then they're you know competing amongst themselves to create the most wow or solve the most problems for customers mm -hmm. great so you have a concept that experience is everything and uh, I'd love to share that you are the chief experience officer for experience.com so tell us a little bit about that that's right. So uh, I'm the chief experience officer at experience.com. How cool is that, by the way? It's a, a pretty title. cool title. I will tell you, the only cooler title that I've ever that I've ever come across uh, is the guy who's the keeper of the records for Guinness World Records. Well, that's cool. Right? <laughs> I actually have a business card that says that. Maybe one day I'll get that job. But until then, yes, chief experience officer of experience.com. We are an experience management platform that empowers our customers to track the voice of their customers everywhere so that they can approve every single part of their business. And what I really love about it, this concept of experience is everything is, you know, experience is the best way to future proof your business against all types of competition. Uh, current competitors, future competitors, the experience that you create, the feeling that you evoke in your customers is what's going to set you apart. And the inverse of that is also true everything is experience. So experience is everything, but everything is experience. Every email that you send, every marketing message, every customer interaction is an opportunity to be amazing. Every interaction, every interaction. So we have uh, just a few moments left. Is there one last tidbit of information, one nugget that you'd like to share with us? You know, I think I'd like to share that every single person in your organization has the power to make or break that customer relationship from the CEO, CEO all the way down to the intern. So come up with an amazement strategy that you're tracking, that you're sharing with every employee at every level and make it real to them so that they can deliver on your promise and, you know, believe the fact that experience is everything and they're the ones with the power to, to make all the difference. I love that. And when they know their role, every employee understands their role and how they impact the experience, uh, then everybody gets to move forward with that. Excellent. Brittany, thanks for being on the show. You are amazing. That's why I call it Be Amazing or Go Home. Thanks, Jeff. Time now for the amazing app brought to you by Outreach Studios. And this app is taking at-home workouts to an all-new level of convenience for its customers. Daily Burn provides one membership with thousands of different workout videos so you can mix it up right from your own home. Daily Burn designs workout programs just for you and features everything from cardio, yoga, kickboxing, muscle building, flexibility, and much more. There are even high intensity training programs that personalize workouts for you every week with the one-on-one -on -one training experiences or even group workouts. Daily Burn also gives you the tools you need to track your progress, including monitoring your weekly goals and history, along with a weight tracker and a calories burned meter. In fact, Daily Burn surveyed its customers for the top three reasons they used the app. Number three was affordability. Number two was shorter workouts. And number one was, yes, you guessed it, convenience, proving once again that convenience is king. By providing a personalized experience and a subscription-based model with multiple self-service and technology options, all while reducing friction for its customers, Daily Burn is truly an amazing app. Staying relevant isn't easy, and brands don't become or remain relevant by accident. Staying top of mind takes a concerted approach and effort. And here to talk about how you can build relevance and ultimately own your industry is John Hall. Hey, John. Thanks for having me, Chef. <laughs> great, great to be here and great to have you here. So let's, let's start. This is the way you described your company to me. You have public relations, you have SEO, and you have thought leadership, these three rings, mm -hmm. and you bring them all together and that's what makes relevance happen. 
Yeah, well, when you're looking at digital leadership or owning your industry through a customer or somebody looking into you, whether it's, uh, you want them to trust what they're looking into. Because a lot of times, you're not Apple, you have the standout, a standout prod, uh, product you've been working on for years. They, they look at companies and they, they say, how can you differentiate yourself? How can, uh, whether it's as uh, in a leader or as a brand. And what I see mostly is that people do these siloed strategies where they're like, we'll be really good at PR, we'll be really good at paid marketing, we'll be really good... Uh, at different things, and what I try to do is almost exactly how you described in a Venn diagram. Look at PR, look at thought leadership, look at SEO, and the the better PR and natural you do that, the better SEO will do. The better thought leadership is where you're getting your leaders quoted and talked about. The better SEO will do. Google is extremely smart, and so the more natural uh, the more natural strategies you use to own your industry, the better you're going to be rewarded, and that's why you have to focus on all three at the same time to get that full benefit. Right. It takes all three. And by the way, I love your company. It's called Relevance and Relevance.com. How I mean, you know, how cool is that? You know, Experience.com, Relevance.com. You guys own your words. You <laughs> own your industry, and I think that's part of it too. To be relevant, you have to have the right name. People have to understand what it is that you do immediately, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. And that's where, like, when we first acquired that domain, it, it was simply because we said we want to commit to owning this industry, and that's what a lot of companies and people don't do. They kind of uh, they they don't go all the way into committing that we want to own this industry because to do that, you have to actually say, okay, we're not just going to be limited by budget here. We're not going to just do something for a quick three months and stop. There's this vision together and it's across the team. It's not just that the leaders believing in it, but it's the middle managers, the people, the entry level people. The more they understand that vision, the more you guys are all working together. And that's why like any employee, even like when there's a message you're trying to get out and engaging your employees to share that content out, a lot of times people say, oh, I want to be in the Wall Street Journal. I want to be in these pubs where I'm like, I've seen a bigger benefit of somebody just doing a, a good engagement strategy where they create articles, they have their employees share out, then they get you know PR to naturally link to it, and they get a better benefit than, than getting in the biggest publication out there like the journal. Right, I, I love that idea, and I know there's a way that you focus on your website uh, becoming a digital leader, if you will, and that's part of it, I know, engagement. Do you have any other strategies you can share with well, our viewers. Well, something you can do, like, and you can just type in, the viewers can type in like virtual keynote speakers. That was one of the things I wanted to own. As soon as this happened, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I, it's gonna this be- This pandemic, this which is hopefully in a rear view mirror, rear view mirror very soon. Uh, yeah, I remember you did a great article on virtual keynote speakers. Well, it's one of the things that, uh, yeah, the pandemic made it very hard to speak in person. Uh, so for people like us who speak a lot, we had to get innovative and, um, you know, I went to my firm and. I was like, hey, what can we do to own this virtual keynote term? So we developed content around it. We ended up getting a list and we pitched that out. So when you type in, just go into Google, type in virtual keynote speakers, you'll see it show up. You'll see other content that I wrote. And because I wanted to own that, I said, hey, like it, it's gonna be hard to speak. So I wanna own the term virtual keynote speakers. And, and my company, which obviously practice what I preach, we did that. And so I think that a lot of times people don't commit to owning terms. And so when you're trying to increase traffic, they're like, oh, like for example, uh, it's a really hard car or a hard keyword uh, to go after. So there's no way I'm going to go up against like Amex or Chase or somebody like that. You can increase your traffic and people uh, paying attention to you just by going after long tail keywords. So virtual keynote speakers. I didn't go after speakers. I went after something that was very particular and targeted towards intent. And that's something a lot of people just don't think about. When they're looking at the buyer's journey and how people are interacting with your brand, mm -hmm. they just say, oh, well, I can't do this because it's too hard. In reality, listen to, your, you listen to your customer, find out where their journey is. What are they searching? What are they looking for? And start seeding the online kind of, uh, uh, the online um, environment with your brand being positioned there. Because if you want to increase your customer experience, people need to come in with, with a lack of trust or with a trust uh, or a, a form of trust because when you don't have that trust formed and people doubt it, then what ultimately happens is that they're gonna come in and they're gonna have a very short wick on your customer experience. Right, so you uh, talked about this virtual keynote speaker, but let's, let's give it something more generic. Uh, let's say I'm an automotive dealer mm -hmm. and I'm in the retail world. How do I compete against all the other people in my market? 
you know, give me an example of what would be make me relevant in that space. Well, sit down and actually listen to the customer and find out what they're searching. What are they looking at around your company, whether it's reviews or, um, you know, are they searching other dealers? Are they looking for cars? And start creating the content around that to seed the industry. As simple as it is, some of the, the best success stories I've seen are like Marcus Sheridan with, uh, he did a pool company where he created content, found out where all the, the buyers were going, and he I, seeded the, the yeah, industry. That's a great story. What Marcus Sheridan did, he had a pool company, and he said the top 10 pool companies in the area to do business with, and of course his pool company <laughs> yeah, was he there. Did. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it forced all the traffic to go. That, that's brilliant. So that's one example. And um, so I, I love that. And if I'm a car dealer uh, and safety is real important to people, the safest cars mm -hmm. you can buy in the whatever city you're in. And uh, that might be a great, or, or the fastest cars if you're into the, the fast cars. All right, we have just a few moments left and I always ask that final question. Give us one last nugget. But this time I want it to be a nugget on what we can do to be relevant in our space and to our customers. Okay, so this is just a term I want you to remember. It's content triggering. This is something I wrote about in my book, uh, Top of Mind, but content triggering is a way that when you're engaging with someone, you're listening to them, let's say they're a stakeholder, they're a customer, you're listening to barriers that they have. You're listening to aha moments, a moment where they simply say, wow, that makes sense. Now I believe in what you're doing and I love this about your product. And then it, when that happens, it's a trigger. And you go down and you write down what they said and you gather that over time. You're gonna start identifying over time, you create this natural process to stay relevant because you're consistently, cr you create a process to listen to the customer, find out the aha moments, the barriers you deal with, get your teammates to do it as well, and you create this data. It's almost like this valuable data system where you can use that information not only to create content, but to engage people better and, and increase their, and you're ultimately never going to get old because you're always learning new things right. and create that process, and I promise you, you'll stay relevant. Listen to the content, listen to your customer, and you will remain relevant. Thanks for a relevant conversation. John Thank Hall, you. thanks. It's great being here. Well, it's time to hear from you and time to Ask Shep, which is brought to you by Outreach Studios. Now, you can find me anywhere on the web, including these social channels, so use the hashtag Ask Shep to ask me your questions and share your amazing stories. So, let's begin. John Sutherland owns and operates a photography company, and he asks, what is the best question to ask on a customer satisfaction survey? Well, there are plenty of great questions to ask on a survey. The Net Promoter Score, or NPS as it's typically called, is one of my favorites, and I've talked about that on past episodes of Be Amazing or Go Home. The NPS question is, on a scale of zero to 10, what's the likelihood you would recommend us? Well, that's a powerful question. You can ask other questions on numerical scales of zero to 10 or one to 10 and even one to five. These focus on how happy customers are with the product, the customer customer service, and much more. All that said, one of my very favorite questions is what I refer to as the one thing question. Now, after you ask a question like the NPS question, you follow it up with an open-ended question that goes like this. Is there one thing you can think of that would make doing business with us even better? Now, if enough people give you the same answer, you'll find the opportunity to make the experience better. And if the customers who gave you a high score on that first question have recommendations, you have the opportunity to improve on greatness. The one thing question is a powerful one. Next, we have Courtney Sellers, who just started her own business, and she says, I have a small company and I'm trying to get my employees to focus more on creating better customer service. Any suggestions on where I should start? Well, this is a great question and a big question, so I'll share with you a short answer to a very big opportunity. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you're a small or big company, this is for every type of business. So, where to start? with the culture. And as a leader, the culture starts with you. You must define the customer service vision and what it is for your company. This is in addition to any vision or value statements you may already have. Be focused, make it short and simple. It should be a defining statement that is all about what you want your customer experience to be. For example, a healthcare organization came up with a simple nine word statement. People serving people like those we love the most. 
Every employee learns that the moment they start working there, and they're trained to deliver on that statement. It's not easy to come up with a perfect vision statement, but when you do, you get it and you know you have it. It will feel right. It's that place to start with the culture. Finally, we have Brian Tipton, who's a sales manager, and he says, our company is known for low prices. Is there a way we can get them to be loyal to us beyond our low prices? This is a classic problem for organizations that focus on price. When you can offer a great customer experience, you start to make your price less relevant. However, if you've always advertised the low price, you'll attract people who are interested in exactly that. And when they find another business that offers a lower price, you lose them. To get your customers to broaden their way of thinking, educate them about what else you offer. If it's great service, let them know it, but you'd better deliver. The moment you make a promise that you can't keep, you'll lose them. Also, engage with them beyond what you sell. Get involved in the community. Share information and content with them in ways that are more about helping them than selling them. For example, don't just tell them you sell a certain product. Share examples of how customers are best using that product. Remember, just having low prices makes you a commodity. You must find ways to get out of the commodity trap. So, are you ready to be amazing? Remember, you can find me just about anywhere on social media. So connect with us on our social channels and don't forget to use the hashtag AskShep to ask me your question or share your amazing story. Time now for the amazing quote brought to you by Outreach Studios. And it's the three magic words everyone should want to hear their customers say. I'll be back. Now don't worry folks, my version of I'll be back isn't about terminating your customers or anything like that, but rather about creating an experience to get your customers to return again and again. So how do we get our customers to say I'll be back? Well, in my newest book, actually titled, I'll Be Back, How to Get Your Customers to Come Back Again and Again, I cover a six-step process which will get your customers to utter those three magic words. I'm gonna summarize the process here. It's not complicated, it's actually pretty simple, but that doesn't mean it's easy to execute. So, let's jump right into it. Step one, ask yourself and the team, why should people do business with us? Now, answers like, we have great customer service. That's too vague and also something the competition is likely to say. Get specific and think of what you offer that makes you unique. Step two, check out the competition. What do they do that you don't? Is this something you could be doing? Look for ways they differentiate themselves from what you do. Step three, keep pace. If you discover things that the competition is doing that you're not and you decide you want to do something similar, don't just copy their ideas. Give them a twist and make them your own. If you copy them, you'll be just like them. And if all you are is a copy of the competition, well, you're a commodity. Step four, move beyond your industry. Ask the team, what companies, not including the competitors, do you like doing business with the most and why? Any type of company counts, small, big, recognizable brands, and more. List reasons you like them and get ready for the next step, which is step five. Borrow from the best. Looking at the reasons you like the companies listed in step four, make a note of what these companies do that you don't, but could. This is a powerful way to create even more distance from your competition. And step six, revisit your value proposition. After you've built the ideas in step five into your customer experience, go back to the question you started with in step one. Why should people do business with us? You should have some new answers, even better answers that will help you create an even better customer experience. Repeat customers are gold. Loyal customers are sacred. Do it right and your customers will come back again and again. Put this six step process into action along with other ideas, strategies, and tactics from the book. This is exactly what it takes to get your customers to say, I'll be back. Well, 
That wraps up this edition of Be Amazing or Go Home. And remember, you can find me just about anywhere on social media, so be sure to connect with us on our social channels and don't forget to use the hashtag AskShep to ask me your questions. Thanks for tuning in. This is Shep Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.